Grand School, what is up? This is Pocket Air. Today I am continuing part three of the Building a Bankroll series. And I've got four tables of 4NL up and going. Um, just started, don't have too much info on anybody here as you can see from my from my samples of hands. Anyway, so building a bankroll. Series is going well. Um, you know, obviously these stakes are I don't know, laughable as far as their beatability. It's just you gotta stick with it and you guys will I mean dominate these stakes. Anybody that anybody that is trying to learn the game and become a better poker player is not gonna have a problem at, at these stakes. Uh, tomorrow I am kicking off the new Range vs. Range series with Damon. This series will coexist with it, so they'll both be going. Uh, here on table one, opening ace queen off. Looks like I got a fishy guy here uh, in the small blind. And obviously any big suited card I'm going to steal with from the button on table two. There was a fishy player up on table two up here at the top and I was able to stack him so or not stack well yeah stack him he he only had like a whatever a dollar sixty or something on table two I elect to go ahead and open ace ten off from the hijack. And we flop two pair. Uh, it's multi-way, so I'm going to make this a tad bigger. It, uh, it's not the driest of flops, but I'm still going to charge because obviously there's more than one person in the pot. So this is interesting. Uh, I think this is an okay. F f is it? That's a pretty big squeeze. But I think I can get the guy behind me to come along. Uh, so I think the odds are there. Uh, with the money already in the pot. And unfortunately he folds. And we hit the nuts here on table two. And we get two folds, so now I really obviously don't have the odds. Uh, this guy checks, and he's... Got a really high continuation bet. I'm not going to stab though. And I don't know what's going on here, but the software is a little laggy. So that guy called. Um, I didn't see. Yeah, so that was a pretty big scoop up on table two. And I didn't see what he had uh, in the... Why is the software lagging so bad? Oh, I know exactly why, because I'm pointing at the wrong database. Silly me. Let's see. So we had King 3. Interesting. I'm going to go ahead and ISO on table two with our big hand, ace queen off. And I think the king's spine to see bet. Uh, I'm just going to see bet once against this guy because we saw what he's capable of holding on to. And I'm just going to make it a little bigger than a half pot. He just saw me um, bet down with the nuts, so uh, in this case. Uh, I, I saw him hang on to king three, and uh, I'm just checking now. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna keep firing against him when he's not capable of folding a second pair of type hand. And I I think when he if he checks this he bets it, but so he's obviously got something. But if he checked it, I mean he uh, even if he checked it, he almost always has me beat. So. There's no no need to try to bluff catch. No need to get fancy. Mm -hmm. 
So that's why I'm lagging a little bit. My, uh, my one of my students sent me their database, and I'm pointing, <laughs> still pointed at that database. And that's probably why I don't have stats on any of these guys too. So I'll uh, after this session, I'll import the hands so that I played today. I mean, it only takes a few rotations at uh, at these stakes to really get a uh, a good idea of what's going on. Um, these guys don't look aggro. I, I might just, uh, and I don't encourage you doing this too often, but I might just get in cheap because this guy's a fully stacked wheel, and uh, you know, try to hit trips or something like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and call again with our with our back door and five outs to the best hand still. On top of that, and on table one, I open with sixes. A lot of loose guys on table one, and of course I'm calling again, and I miss. But you know the I'm always going four cents against this guy. I'm not going to call here, but. Um, I'm always calling four cents because I know that I could probably hit and raise him and get paid off just fine. So sometimes I'll make those weird plays if the guy's a big enough well. And this guy's just really goofy. 17 hands on him, but he's three bet and half his hands. And there's not really much I can do about it, especially now with Ace Ace Nine. But I think we'll see a pretty wide range unless he just, you know, unless he happened to hit the top of his range. Yeah, so very wide range. It's, it's like one of those, uh, when you go to the library and you go to the kids section, it's one of those little pop-up books. Uh, that's that's kind of how I see a lot of these fish. They just, <laughs> it's like a little kid story. They show you exactly what they have. They tell you exactly what they have. So another cool thing today is there's it's Saturday night, so there's enough tables going where I didn't have to get some of those crazy fast tables where I'm trying to explain hands to you guys and <laughs> timing out. Um, really no need to bet this. Uh, I'm just going to check it back to him in position, and hopefully he uh, takes a stab at it, which he does. And I'm just going to call. Uh, I think there's plenty of room to go ahead and just 3-bet on table 1 for value against uh, this early position to open. And on a board like this, um, I think I'd be pretty crazy not to c-bet here. So I'm going to go ahead and make it pretty decent c-bet. And if I get raised, it's just a fold. Not going to continue on table two. Um, and I'm going to go ahead after the raise and just bet out on table four. And I do get raised on uh, table one, so I think that's a good place to see bet. I'm always see betting there, but um, obviously, you know, we're see betting against this range. It's uh, it's not always going to work, so we can only make the best play most of the time. So he does show a bluff and. You know, that's fine. He raises it, and then he laughs a little bit about it, but we're still playing his range, so we'll let him be Phil Ivey for this hand. So this guy overbets. Uh, we did catch a five. Uh, I'm just not going to like any card that comes off. And yeah, we have five outs, but the guy's not stacked, so there's not really the implied odds that we need here on table three. Uh, two overs. Um, 
I th think I'll call one. I'm gonna float one here and um, kind of evaluate the turn with our with our six, essentially six outs. And when this guy bets again, I'm just getting out of the hand. And C bet on table one with our uh, aces. And I don't have the fold equity. I don't, I, at least I can't see the fold equity here. So I'm just going to get in the hand with king queen. I'm not going to squeeze it until uh, I know a little more about these guys. And here, of course, the guy that I don't have any. Uh, reads of him folding to three bets. I'm going to make it pretty big. 44 cents and he does just fold. And I'm going to go ahead and just check call on table two. I do want them betting their entire range on the flop. check out of this guy I think that kind of caps his range because it is multi-way and if he had a bigger hand he's gonna keep betting out and I'm calling I'm calling the pack back and I'm gonna go ahead and check back to him he is pretty tight um, and it looks like he's value betting pretty big um, thinking through this uh, I don't have much on him 22.14 so he calls and I just I, I just think I'm beat more often than not for that price and I know that might seem really nitty in that case but uh, thinking through it uh, I don't think he's betting with a hand like Queen Jack, or at least betting that big. Um, I mean, I have no indication that he's been aggro at all over 42 hands. And uh, I think it. I think most of his range in that situation is two pair plus, like Queen 10, something like that. When he when he bets that big. So, again, maybe a little nitty. Uh, I still think I'm behind his range. Um, and when he bets that big, uh, I think I'm far enough behind just to go ahead and fold there. I, I know I only have to be right roughly 28% of the time. <sighs> if anything, it's a, it's a, it's pretty close in my mind to a break-even call. And here, so we got a guy here who actually can fold. Another tight guy who opens. I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and bump this pretty big, and then just set mine here on table four. Got a nice blocker. I don't want to play. It. I don't want to just flat this plate out of position with our queen jack or king jack. And this guy here. Even though he's not the uh, the opener, is very capable of folding. So interestingly enough, that guy calls uh, the under the gun opener calls. I think that really caps his range. I don't think he's calling too often with a pocket pair. Um, I think it's bigger broadways, and I'm gonna fire once and just kind of be done with it. Um, I want to make it semi big just so that he doesn't feel comfortable with two over cards, which I think is a huge part of his range. And 
just going to fold on table 4. There's really nothing I can hope for if I call. I really wish I could sit here on this table because this guy's really bluffy and really bad on table 1. And I am monitoring this guy to make sure that, you know, I, I didn't have a lot of info on him, and still he hasn't been aggressive at all. And I, I am going to continue to monitor, monitor him and make sure my read was, uh, you know, make sure it was a good read. And I'm racing big on table three against the short stack. I just want to entice him to get it all in. Uh, and it doesn't matter now. I mean, we can't fold. I know it's a wet flop, but uh, either way, right, there's just not enough money left. And let's just go ahead and get it, get the rest in. I that'd have been really funny. Uh, I I was coaching someone, and <laughs> I had a guy like uh, build a mega big big pot, and then. Uh, my student, after he finally checked, uh, after the villain checked the river, my, uh, I mean, it was like, it was like the guy was getting like 20 to 1, and he just folds it after, it was really funny. Uh, here, um, I, I think this is just a check. Uh, we have two over pairs, so we still have a lot of outs to come, or possible outs, so I'm just going to check it. And this guy's starting to get a little interesting. Um, I think when I open and he flats uh, 25, 15, um, I mean, he, he hits a piece of this board. Uh, I know I'm on the button, uh, so my range is a bit wider, but I think he hits this board even more often than I do. And if I'm looking at hand versus range, obviously I, I'm not looking too good in that situation. I just have a bluff catcher. So, I'll just go ahead and get out of it. So, we have a 15-3. Where are we? Big blind. So, he goes ahead and flats. Uh, this definitely hits his range. I, I do want to encourage him to bet his entire range. So, I'm just going to check here with our second pair top kicker. Unfortunately, he doesn't do much, so I'm just going to bet half pot. And I still think there's some value because I think he bets a uh, queen, so I'm going to go ahead and bet another half pot. And he folds. Uh, A7 off, I'm in position, uh, this guy doesn't mid-raise, I'm flatting here. And uh, he bets pot, obviously I flat just to hit a piece of the board, when I don't, I'm just getting out of it, it was such a good price. I'm going to hit, uh, you know, at least a third of the time, so he, he was giving me uh, a very nice price to, to get in there. So when you're when you're playing these stakes, it is important to uh, first of all, I wouldn't I wouldn't be trying to outplay people. I mean, they basically show you what their range is just by the actions that they take. Um, so I wouldn't be concerned with that. I would be looking at you know their tendencies a lot more, right? Because they're just so much e uh, more easy to exploit at these lower micro stakes than they are when when you get to you know, even 25 and 50 and L, etc. So, definitely be looking at tendencies and exploit those tendencies. Um, I mean, it's, uh, I know it sounds pretty obvious, right, but um, it's, uh, it's really, really important. Uh, when you see something out of line, like, uh, you know, they see about the flop, uh, that's, uh, I'm looking for an example, or this guy here who, 
ever see bets over 65 hands. Uh, I'm going to be, obviously, when he s starts betting, I know it's probably a pretty strong range. So in that case, I can exploit him by not paying him off unless I have a, you know, uh, a big hand, a nutty hand, or a you know, second nut hand, something like that. Get in cheap on table three with our pocket fives. Unfortunately, we miss, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> I'm still folding here. Jeez, oh, that's such a. I mean, get ten, eleven to one. Uh, I still don't have the odds to uh, <laughs> to hit the five, but it's still pretty funny stuff. All right, let's see. Let's try to get some hands here, huh? Guess you really don't need too many hands at these stakes. You can, uh, you can definitely outplay your opponents. So I'm feeling better and better about that fold earlier with the king queen. Even if I had to be ready 25 percent or 28 percent of the time, roughly, I'm feeling better and better there because this guy up here, I have not seen him get out of line, and I have not seen him bet a hand that, uh, you know, that lost at the river. So. Um, so this is a fishy player. Uh, bump it up a little, I think. Uh, I'm out of position, so I'll make it, you know, 52 cents or so. I'm going to jump in with this guy in position on table two. This guy goes ahead and calls. I'm going to bet uh, two-thirds pot on table one. And I get, uh, I, I have to flat now. So this guy jams. Uh, this is dry enough where I'm going to call just because his range can be so wide with draws. <sighs> I, it's one of those situations where I'm, gonna, I'm ahead of the majority of his range, and that's what import, what's important. Yes, he could have some sets here, but there's just so many draws where my aces do really well. And there's the draw. And I'm just getting out on table two. Um, I, I, that actually came up in my study group the other night, by the way. Uh, I, I'm, try, I'm trying to think how it went, but a student was asking why it was okay to shove on a board like that. And, ah, I didn't mean to do that on table one. And the reason being is they have so much more in their range that they're shoving with their... Uh, than they would on, say, a, uh, you know, on a dry board, right, uh, with with no draws, then, then you know, that's closer to a fold in that situation. Uh, it's really weird. I, I wish this guy wouldn't have donked out. Um, thinking of my equity and the pot size here. So, I'm thinking if I have the implied odds. I don't have the immediate odds, and I think I'm going to go ahead and fold here. Um, it's pretty close, but it's going to be hard to be too happy if, if a diamond comes off. Um, and I wasn't getting a super good price. So I'd have to be really confident that they're going to get a lot of money in. And I have no stats on this guy, and this guy seems pretty tight. So if this guy bats, I'm calling anything that he, he bats on table two, unless it's like something insane. And I'm just going to ISO on table one. And another thing that I see, by the way, is uh, people kind of starting out way, way too aggressive with ISOs. Like, think about why you're ISOing. <laughs> Don't just ISO. Like, seriously, you got to think about it. And you got to know, like, you know, if I ISO here, 
how many fish are going to act behind me, um, things like that. If I, you know, it, well, I'm not going to, you shouldn't be icing with like jack nine and stuff and think you're going to outplay a fish. It's, it's, it's really kind of silly. Um, so I'm going to call. So get, he's got a lot in his range that I'm doing just fine on. Uh, he's pretty aggro. I'm not going to blow up the pot because he, I just saw him raise this guy and I'm going to go ahead and let one more card roll off where I can feel really uh, good about uh, being, you know, being far ahead of his range. And then he bets pot. So I have a king. He did this before. I think I'm doing pretty good against his range. I'm going to go ahead and make this call. And unfortunately he hits a flush. Uh, you know, that's a part of his range, but a guy like this, I'm, uh, I've got to look at their range in its entirety. And, you know, I do only have two hands on him, but uh, I just saw him do basically the same thing twice in a row. And... A really loose passive guy. I only have four hands on him, but he's betting. I have third pair. I'm just going to go ahead and fold out here. I'm going to open these twos from the button on table two. And uh, I'm going to get in any hand I can with this crazy up here on table one. I would prefer to hit the board, but it's not always going to happen. And this is that guy that's pretty capable of doing some funny stuff, but obviously with the equity we have, it's not worth, it's not worth calling there. So he shows that he bluffed again, but you know that's uh, that's fine. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit there and play like a goofball when I have absolutely nothing in the hand. Uh, I don't not even you know something that's really considered a bluff catcher there. So he's in position and he's stabbing. So good for him. Uh, good three bet hand on table two. I don't have the uh, I, I, this guy just doesn't fold, um, so I'm just gonna get out of it. Wait till a uh, a better hand in that in that situation. Uh, so we opened on on uh, table one. I'm gonna go ahead and fire once. Uh, could be kind of silly because I probably don't have too much fold equity against this guy and he's probably hanging on to uh, any pair that he picks up and and then some so uh, he bets four cents I don't know what that means from him yet uh, we'll kind of see I know if he blasts it he has what he conceives a good hand so I'm gonna call this because I'm gonna uh, hopefully this guy's gonna be at the table for a while and I want to see what he considers a four cent hand and that's third pair and uh, yes, I was sure that I was behind there. I just, uh, you know, for that price, I'm I'm gonna gain some information to stack this fish later. I should have made this bigger. Uh, that was already a mistake on table one. I really hope he raises me. I should have made this bigger. And against this guy, I'm going to bet pretty big, especially on a wet board like this. And he just falls, unfortunately. So, there's some more information. Fishy is capable of folding. Um, it's not going to fold any, you know, even, even most likely the worst of pairs on boards.
so with that in mind you know those I need to be betting any any uh big made hands that I have because it's uh he's just gonna be calling with uh, most of his range um I don't see any reason to bloat this I'm gonna try to sneak in on on table two and you know the more fish that come along and hit a third pair and raise or never fold you know that's fine I, I don't have a lot of fold equity against this guy so uh, isoing with twos is probably not a good idea and when players are this bad <laughs> I don't mind just uh, keeping it cheap just know when to fold don't don't try to make something happen So I flat in position on table four against a reg open. Um, unfortunately, we don't. Uh, we you know we totally missed the board. Uh, we are in position, but with two fish in a hand, I'm just gonna check this back. And the board's just so wet that I already don't have a lot of fold equity, and these guys are likely to hang on to anything here. Um, four cents. I think I'm gonna go ahead and call. I, I do have six outs, and now I essentially have a bluff catcher. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and call uh, again another fish uh, at this table. Um, it's really coordinated, so if he has a pair, I I think he checks it down. Yeah. I thought I called that for a second. Bumping it up on table three with our King Jack offsuit from the small blind. And uh, basically for this reason, I mean, this guy comes in here with two hands and he's limping on the button. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start my value betting. Uh, I bet half pot, unfortunately. He just folds. And so far, we're looking at uh, probably another good session with, uh, oh geez, uh, buying and a half or so. So that's good. Need to get some more time in on this series uh, so I can bump it up pretty quick to 10 and L, and uh, and from there, uh, it usually goes pretty quick to 25 and L. And 25 to 15 L's really quick. So in my next video, uh, I do want to show you guys my new HUD. It's pretty cool. Uh, like I said, the latest No Caddy Advantage HUD, and I installed it. Just have not been able to use it yet. Just installed it today. Uh, I'm just gonna get out of this hand with a seven off. If it was a better ace, I'll, or even an ace with a, you know, straight possibility or flush possibility, uh, I'll probably ISO there in position. But uh, it's, that ace is not going to hold up in a multi-way pot, and that's what's going to happen on this table, as you can see. And 
I like this guy too. This is uh, this is the kind of reg that's just so exploitable, and you want to be playing with them. Uh, this reek guy, reek twenty two on table one. So uh, I'm kind of thinking through it. Coaching update. Uh, things have been going really well. Uh, great students. Uh, there should be a short that I have that comes out before this one that kind of talks about uh, just how well the study group's been going and the things that everybody's learning, uh, as well as the graduate school forums have been great. Uh, so also the podcast coming out. Uh, I think tomorrow. So here, uh, he bets. I'm going to bump this just a little bit. Uh, I think we can still get some value. Uh, and again, these are uh, very fishy players, so I think the range is pretty wide for calling. We have the board smashed. Um, and it is dry, so uh, that's why I didn't make it too big. Still want to get a little more money in there, but, uh, well, unfortunately it is full. I'm not, I'm not going to do the four cent thing, though. Um, it's not going to build the pot where I can even get Brillo stack if I want to, you know, if I, I would be unable to get Brillo stack, so I'm definitely bumping it a little uh, in, in relation to the size of the pot, and so what's going on here, so we open, we get 3-bet, this guy hasn't 3-bet yet, um, if I flat here, yeah, I'm in position, um, I mean, this is way too big though, to flat, uh, I'm just going to fold. I'm not... <laughs> the guy's so bad, I'm not playing. I'm not doing a coin flip with a fish, uh, even if I'm, you know, if I've got 5% equity on his, uh, on his range. It's just silly when I can stack him 100 times over, you know, by sitting here for a couple hours. Maybe not 100 times over, but you guys know what I mean. Uh, so, okay, so now he's going to look crazy. So he threw that again and basically kills any uh, odds I would have gotten for a for a set mine. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and fold. Unfortunately, And the more he does that, the the more hands like king queen move up on, you know, equity wise against his range. So keep an eye on him. I'm loving it. I wouldn't want anybody else sitting to my right. So I'm gonna go ahead and bet pretty big here. Uh, big multi-way pot. Um, not too big. I'll do like uh, 37 cents. It is a fairly dry board, so. I did notice how long it took this guy to uh, to call that, and it's, when it takes him that long to call, either he's slow playing something, or he's on a uh, on a draw. So I'm gonna fire once more. Am I? Let me think about this. Are he's sitting with two overs? Uh, I'm gonna check call. I think. And now I'm pretty certain there's some value to be had when he lets that roll off. 
uh, unless he has a hand like Ace-4, uh, which is a small portion of his range. So I'm going to bet 48 cents. I think I'm going to get paid pretty often um, if he does have anything. This sucks on table 4 when ah, they keep making these crazy 3-bet sizes and making me fold out my pocket pairs. So, uh, the reason why I checked instead of double barreled on table 3 uh, against the 26-23, uh, obviously, uh, these freaking guys, man, was it 18 cents? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's just too shitty of a hand, I'm just going to fold it. But the reason why I uh, went ahead and checked is I want him to stab with his entire range and I want to try to stay f as far ahead of his uh, range as I can and when he flats like that and takes the time that he takes uh, I think he has a pretty linear range in a lot of cases so I you know I uh, uh, unless uh, if he you know, he, the queen does hit his range, but I want uh, I, I want him to sit there and stab, and so I would have check called, and you know, felt pretty good about being uh, uh, having some maneuvering room against his range on table three. That is <sighs> okay. So this guy is capable of folding, and it's a pretty dry board. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire uh, about 48 cents. And that's on table three. The king rolls off. We still have ace, um, ace queen on table two. So there's still value to be had. So we've got a little, uh, a bit over half pot. And unless he has ace king, we have the nuts. Uh, so I mean, we have a second nuts. So that made no sense. Um, so I still want to get him to call. Uh, and we're going to be chopping a lot here. Um, if he did have a five, you know, we have the better hand now. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and fire once more. When he jams, um, he's a 25-8, and the only thing I'm worried about is ace-king. So this is a call for another dollar. And it's just a chop. Well, um, I think we're coming to a close. I'll go ahead and run another couple of minutes. And do check out the blog. There's a blog. Uh, I have a blog going that's uh, running alongside this bankroll series. So so do check that out. And um, I'm, I'm going to post the uh, my session updates to that blog right after this video. So we got some equity to work with on table one. Um, uh, and I'm going to call once here because this guy has plenty behind him if we do hit. Uh, we only have a 16% chance of hitting, but at the same time, and we pick up more equity now, but uh, at the same time, we're just going to squash that guy if, uh, I mean, we're going to get paid if, if we do hit. So uh, He checks. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and fire a little over half pot, just because we do have a lot of equity. Um, you know, maybe we don't make the nuts. Uh, fortunately, he raises. Uh, maybe we don't make the nuts with the uh, two aces out. But he most likely has trips, and I'm I'm trying to figure this out. So if I call here, he has two bucks behind him, but I'm getting a good price. I still think I get paid off. I could also set myself to lose the stack, but it's pretty close. I'm going to make the call. And I'm just going to call him off.
So, I mean, that's just such a big part of his range, a uh, single ace. And I lost track about of like three tables. Probably should have checked on table four. And obviously he says great catches, but uh, we were calculating what we needed. Uh, when he raised, he only raised by 2x. So we, I had about, because I had a straight and a flush uh, set of outs there. Um, with one card to come, I had roughly 28 to 30% equity. And that alone was probably, I was probably there without implied odds, and then we had $2 more for him that, you know, if he did have trip aces, he's going to be shoving. So, I like to play. And that might be one that I mark and go back and just see how plus EB we were. And I don't know what I'm doing on table two because I'm too busy talking. But yeah, that's that's one of those hands where uh, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna go back and review it. But it's uh, it's a plus EV play at first glance. So second pair, I go ahead and call. Um, I again was talking, and I don't know what was going on at table four. Uh, Brillo, what do we know about Brillo? He bets 48 cents out. The second pair. Um, Puts the river 100% of the time that he's been to the river. Um, this guy doesn't seem to. Well, he just stabbing a lot. I'm gonna go ahead and make this call. I think it's pretty close. Yeah. Uh, he's definitely got to have some air in his range if he's betting 100% of rivers. Which my stats are all screwed up, so I can't see it anyway. Uh. All right, last hand kings. Let's go out on a good one. Um, make this pretty big. Oh wow, he didn't even think twice about it. He just like screw this. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and sit out on these tables uh, again. That's part three of the building a bankroll. And I will post my stat updates on the blog ASAP or I might even pause this and just show you guys uh, because you're going to be able to see the blog uh, far before the video anyway so if you if you haven't seen it yet it's probably an older entry on the blog Alright, so I'm just trying to cycle out here. I'm actually getting high on time, so I might have to cut out before the video is done. So, this has been... I'm going to be... Actually, I'll be right back to show you... Uh, to show you the session stats. Alright, grind of school, and here we are. So, here's the wrap-up from today. Um, again, pretty good. Um, I, I do need to play a little more outside of the videos, just to hurry up and get to 10 and L, 25 and L, etc. But, uh, yeah, so, I mean, pretty decent, once again. Um, you know, definitely watch it, mimic it, uh, try to study your opponents, study their ranges, um, and, I mean, you're just gonna kill it. Uh, you, uh, all you guys, anybody aspiring and putting some time in, it's just gonna crush it, so, uh, don't sweat it too hard, and, uh, yeah, I wish you guys luck at the tables. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave me feedback on the forum, and I'll talk to you guys soon. All right, later.